great. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, glad you could attend my little talk here on profiling small town art using Wikidata, Wiki Commons, the Wiki um, tools in general. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you came here because the title is very nondescript. And I was discussing uh, with my friend Lane earlier about this. And what I'd really like to call it is, uh, let's see, it's gonna work. Chinchilla Cafe presents Wikidata Profiling of Small Town Art. Uh, my name is Robin Isadora Brown. Uh, my username is Robin is Adorable here. And yeah, so let's get started. Uh, just to give you a few key points about what is Chinchilla Cafe and what is this project uh, we've been doing. Uh, I've got three main points for you. So you can kind of just look at pretty pictures for the rest of the presentation. Maybe not as pretty as the previous presentation, but I think they're pretty fun. Um, but if you want to go away with these three points, I think that'd be amazing. Uh, the first about this project is that essentially we are a DIY nightclub, uh, house show venue, LGBT community center, and uh, media production studio, kind of. Um, and so one of the missions of Chinchilla Cafe is we are here to archive local culture in a very uh, small part, but hopefully looking to expand that within our small town, which I'll get into. Uh, we are about fostering queer community. So this is an explicit uh, LGBTQ plus space. And we are very upfront about that. We are very in your face about it. And uh, we wanna make sure that this is a refuge and a place that celebrates uh, queer individuals and queer community. And finally, uh, this part of supporting not only artists, bands, performers who come to Chinchilla Cafe, um, but as well as the people and organizations within our town. And we do this uh, by purely just existing, but also offer some actual material things uh, that can help people. <clears throat> and so part of this introduction, again, my name is Robin. I am relatively new to the Wikipedia movement. This is my first conference, and I'm very excited to uh, meet people and talk to people. Uh, I am a biological researcher by training. So I, do, I did my PhD recently uh, in developmental neuroscience. Uh, I'm extremely gay. I'm trans uh, and very happy about that. I enjoy music. And I have some roommates, which you can see over there. One of them's right there. Uh, and I have some roommates that are courier. Uh, we have Pip, Napoleon, and Starbaby, which are chinchillas, uh, hence the name Chinchilla Cafe. They live with us and we live with them. So I said this is Wikidata Wiki profiling the small town. Our small town is Charlottesville, Virginia. Charlottesville, Virginia is a relatively small town, technically a city um, in Virginia. So you can see on the map here. And we about have half a hundred thousand people, a little bit more in the area. That increases when the students come, uh, primarily at the University of Virginia, which is the public flagship university in Virginia. Um, and Charlottesville is well known as a quaint little college town nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, there's a lot of hiking, there's winery, there's food, and uh, it's generally um, a pretty pre pleasant place to live. And there's a lot of historical things. Uh, there are some monuments, and uh, these days there are actually fewer monuments. So this is what... I would know about Charlottesville, right? And that's what a lot of people might know. A lot more people might know about it uh, due to events back in the summer of 2017, uh, in which fascists uh, and alt-right individuals essentially came to town in protest and ended up, there ended up being a essentially a terrorist attack. And we made world night, worldwide news pretty much overnight. Um, and our name comes up all the time uh, both in the news repeatedly, on the debate stage, uh, and when you Google Charlottesville. Uh, much to my dismay, I've censored a lot of these pictures, as you can see. When you Google Charlottesville, some of the first images you see are the moments after someone drew a, drove into a crowd of people, which I was there to witness that. And it's incredibly hard <laughs> to see those images uh, when you're Googling this town. And that informs a lot about what this, what, what I've done with this, uh, with Chinchilla Cafe and what I'm presenting about. Another thing you need to know about is COVID, which I'm sure you all already know. Sorry, I'm gonna take this off. Um, and in 2019, 2020, when COVID hit, uh, our town, like many other places, suffered a lot. Restaurants closed, bands broke up, people couldn't perform. Um, fast forward a few years, uh, recovery has been very difficult, um, including with these bands and these music venues. 
as a newly out trans woman, so I came out in 2022, um, in light of this, this new world we are living in, I, re I personally did not really have much of a queer community. Uh, I did not see much of myself in Charleston and what we were doing. Um, and I thought, okay, given this history of the city, given the presence of, um, lack, of the, lack of the things that are important to me, like live music, uh, connecting with people, connecting with uh, queer people, it wasn't really there. And so me and my roommates and some of our friends were like, how do we, how do we meet these things? How do we do something about this? And we're like, well, yeah, let's, let's just do it. Let's just do what we want to see. And so we essentially started Chinchilla Cafe, which in 2022, and it originally started as a um, kind of like as just an outdoor movie uh, screening experience in our backyard. And one day we decided, what if what if we had a concert? We have, we have some of our roommates have had experiment or sorry experiences uh, hosting what we call house shows. So a band comes into your house and has a concert, and a bunch of people come into your house as well, and it usually gets very messy and rambunctious. Or like, okay, well, what if we do that but make it a little different? So we had our first show, our DIY do-it-yourself house show, um, where we had three local bands play. We solicited donations, uh, ten dollars suggested donations. However, we were very explicit that this was a free event. Anybody could come, pay what you can. If you can't pay anything, just have fun, hang out. Um, we had a local nonprofit called the S12 Shop, which is essentially an anarchist bookstore um, out there promoting um, uh, selling books and just giving out stickers, materials, things like that. And we had a chinchilla performance. Oh, and to our namesake, we had chinchillas do a little show as well. And this drew a lot of people to our house and to this first show. So here are a couple of very blurry pictures from this time and a video. Audio is not going to be great. But this is a local band called uh, Emily Rose playing in our living room from the first show. As you can see, it's very bare bones. Um, we have some weird, not even weird, just just some boring artwork on the walls, some pink, uh, pink lights. And we moved all of our furniture outside. And we're like, it was really popular. It was really popular. We had a great time. And we're like, what if, OK, what if we did this again? OK, and we had another show at the end of September. Uh, featuring four more bands, and it went even better, right? People came, people had a great time, people donated, and we're like, let's do this again, and again, and again, and some more. And this was just within the first few months of uh, our first show till the end of 2022, including having a dance party, right? And we had different bands, and people came, and people kept coming. And what we found was, was that... Um, this essentially became kind of like a queer space. Most of the audience uh, were some flavor of LGBTQ, a lot of trans people as well. Artists and other bands locally and in the surrounding areas would be like, hey, can we come play Chinchilla? And we're like, okay, we, we might have something special here. And that made us question, so what do we do? How do we continue this in 2023 and beyond? And one of our uh, our slogans for Chinchilla Cafe is like, how do you all do this? Why do you do this? Like, well, each time we're gonna try to make it better. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna talk about these kind of three different aspects of Chinchilla, Chinchilla Cafe, what we do, how we do it, um, and how does Wiki fit into this, this vision, into this project. So I broke this down into the space, to the actual physical space and the feelings people get by going to Chinchilla Cafe. Uh, the archives, so what we do with actually uh, this information and data and how do we record what is actually happening. Um, and the impact, I want to talk about what Chinchilla, Chinchilla Cafe means, how does it affect artists, how does it affect the local community. So the space. Uh, I like to think of Chinchilla Cafe as a uh, spectrum of different sensory experiences. So when you first come to Chinchilla Cafe, uh, you're greeted by a very nondescript house usually covered in uh, vegetation, and you'll see people hanging out on the front porch. This is a very chill space where people can talk quietly, they can sit by themselves, um, and greet people that tend to come up. It's a very welcoming space, and we make sure we always have someone there um, to welcome anyone coming through the doors. Once inside, it becomes a little more psychedelic and trippy and kind of weird. 
this is our living room, aka the concert hall, where we have different decorations lining all of the walls. Uh, we have speakers, a PA system, the bands play in the corner, and we have uh, too many lights to count with lasers and disco balls and all kinds of flashing things. If you go through the house, you go into the back. If you find that the concert hall is a little too much, a little too uh, uh, stimulatory, you can go into the uh, back zone where we have a collaborative art board where people typically draw on this dry erase board, um, write little messages, uh, interact with the bands where they set up a, a merch table where they sell their merchandise. Uh, and this is also where, uh, actually I'll get to that. So we have this collaborative art board, right? And we've uh, taken some pictures, not documented, but it's a very great way to contribute to the vibe of the place um, and maybe not have to be talking to people. And you can just kind of zone out and do that sort of thing. In the same room, this more quiet, serene room, we also have the chinchillas. This is where we have the chinchilla show. We have their uh, giant tin. Uh, which in these pictures are a little older, but now they take up half the room uh, where you can observe them play, eat. Um, and if you're very nice and with our permission, we can go in there and even feed them. This is uh, people's reaction to the chinchilla performance in which they roll in a little box full of dust called a dust bath. This is how they get clean. And it's very cute and it's very adorable. And if you haven't seen it before, you should check out some videos that I'll be showing later. Um, and these, of course, this always draws a crowd and people are very interested in the chinchillas. Finally, you go outside into our back gardens where it's just an open backyard area where we are projecting uh, weird music videos uh, on a giant projection screen, which I think you'll see later, um, and have various areas where people can meet other people, talk, hang out. Um, okay, yes. And generally just meet other queer people. Oftentimes, we'll have spaces where there are more trans people than non-trans people hanging out, which is something I had not experienced before. We also have um, tried to make it a hospitable place. Um, we, is a, is, uh, excuse me, it is a place where we uh, do not tolerate any sort of discrimination or bad behavior. Uh, we provide snacks and water for everyone, masking, um, condoms, and other sexual health products. We have some risk reduction um, uh, materials available for everyone, uh, including fentanyl test strips and the like. And often we have some sort of nonprofit uh, that we are trying to support, highlight, or uh, they are offering something for people in attendance. And some of these organizations include the F12 Bookstore, which I mentioned, uh, an, a local underground fetish fellowship, uh, trans self defense organization, and et cetera. I also want to highlight Evil Harm Reduction, which is, which is a local nonprofit that um, essentially gives out uh, clean needles and other harm reduction supplies. And we've had several fundraisers um, to benefit them, raising uh, over thousands of dollars. So where does Wiki come into all of this? It's kind of a crazy experience, crazy place. Um, what are we actually doing with Wiki? So we decide we want to archive what we're doing. We want to record the artists and the artwork that are produced with Chinchilla Cafe. These are some samples of our uh, posters, our show posters designed by Davian Garcia, who's one of our roommates and friends. Um, so we have this sort of in-house production of posters, um, sorry, of concert posters. And with each poster, we deposit this uh, into Wikimedia Commons under an open uh, license. And with that, we have data uh, associated with the bands, right, tagged on the actual uh, file itself. And with each file, that's also links to our Wikidata page. So we have a Wikidata entry for every concert uh, that includes information, uh, not only with the poster, but our location, so Chinchilla Cafe, when it was, the pictures associated with this concert, and all the participants, i.e. the bands or performers. And then for each band or performer, we have a Wikidata entry for them, in which we uh, provide their information, if, uh, such as the kind of music genre they are, any sort of links to social media, split streaming platforms, and to any other wikis, such as if they have an article on Wikipedia, which either we have wrote, or maybe someone else has wrote, or we are planning to write, um, as uh, in their comments category, right? So you can see we have uh, a picture here. It's, an, it's a very nice picture uh, of this band, Echo Astral. They are based out of Washington, D.C., and have played at Chinchilla Cafe several times. And that's one of the other things we do, is that 
we take pictures of the bands and not, not exactly professional, but probably better than from uh, what most people would get from a cell phone that's kind of like in the moment. So we have a photo station where we take these photos and upload them to comments under a uh, open license so that the bands can use these pictures uh, for whatever purposes they want, right? They can uh, customize them, they can sell them, they can use them as artwork, um, but it's essentially theirs or anyone's to work with. And so here's some examples of some of these uh, band or artist photography with some several bands. And we also take pictures, right, during the actual performance, as you can see, um, which are actually really nice and I think are uh, really fun to uh, to post and for bands to uh, to have, given the weird little environment it is at Chinchilla Cafe. What I think is really important, in addition to these band pictures, are the pictures of attendees. So when you walk into Chinchilla Cafe before the show starts, we have a photography station for the bands, but also for anybody who wants a picture. We tell them, we are going to upload this to comments with your permission. If you're okay with that, we're gonna take a picture. And more often than not, a lot of people like to have their picture taken. And I think this is really important just to document the kinds of people that come to Chichilla Cafe, um, pictures that kind of capture friendship, love, uh, queer joy. Um, and this is probably one of the most special parts of Chinchilla Cafe that I know I really appreciate and other people do as well. And these pictures are also associated with the events page. Um, so the impact, how am I doing on time? 10 minutes, perfect, thank you. Um, so the impact, so what, what, is, what does Chinchilla actually have, what kind of effect has it had on Charlottesville? So we, we can have more practical things. So with these pictures and this actual space to perform, we are essentially creating a niche, um, a place where bands that maybe they can't, they likely cannot play at arenas, um, and they're maybe even not going to play at your local um, concert hall, right? Where people have to pay anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks to go see them. Uh, this kind of provides a, a more casual, a more friendly, a more intimate space um, that a number of different levels of bands uh, can play at and actually engage with their audience and have fun. They can sell their merch if people would like to buy that. Um, they get these images, which I mentioned earlier, that they can use uh, for any number of purposes. One of the main ways uh, bands use these images are by sharing them on Instagram, talking about their show, using these images as promo media for their next performances. And again, people tend to like them. You see a colorful image and people are like, oh, wow, that's really cool. What is this? Who is this artist about? Uh, we've had some uh, media coverage about Chinchilla Cafe. Um, and not quite enough to replace the search results uh, when you search Charlottesville, but enough that we actually have essentially put our foot in um, the cultural space here in Charlottesville, even so much as having uh, an article in Spin Magazine, which is a, uh, a pretty, pretty uh, well-known like music um, publication, uh, which was really exciting to have. We've also been um, dipping our toes uh, into video production. So with some of the uh, band, local bands, including Some Great Girl Fight, Shag Wolf, and to be released soon, uh, this band Films on Song, uh, we've made uh, music videos for them that have been shot in our house at Chinchilla Cafe, um, all for free. So we they come to Chinchilla Cafe and we're like, here you go, here's some pictures. And if you have time, hey, let's, let's make some sort of music video and plan this out. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a clips from each of these. I highly recommend you go check these out on YouTube, but you can get kind of a sense of what it's like to actually go to a show at Chinchilla Cafe. And so the first one is more produced. It's more, um, much more angles. This is actually a live shot of a concert. These are, I would say, these are two of our, uh, not favorite, but we work very closely with these bands um, and I've done a lot of projects together. So I really wanted to highlight them. Uh, we are also uh, 
in the process of getting a documentary edited and made um, by Tarek uh, Bagic, I believe this is how you pronounce his last name, um, who has decided to make a documentary about Chinchilla Cafe um, and documenting what this place is about and what we've been doing. Um, so looking forward to that soon. And finally, um, some more distant things, uh, or sorry, some more um, relevant things is that uh, the queer community in Charlottesville has almost, I would say, exploded in terms of the types of um, places, activities, events that could happen. I think one of the most notable ones is the Beautiful Idea, which grew out of the F12 shop and is now this uh, completely trans-owned sort of community hub, event space, and queer market that highlights and sells a lot of um, uh, work produced by queer artists in Charlottesville and the surrounding areas. Uh, we've started having more and more of these sort of uh, DIY venues uh, for different uh, bands and artists around town, including our friends at Daedalus Books, which is a used bookstore that is uh, essentially a labyrinth. Uh, and you can see, we have, this is a photo from their first show, which was, I think, one or two weeks ago, and they're planning to have more. Um, but there are more venues like this cropping up um, again and again, and even house show venues. So we're, I feel like we've definitely sort of inspired this, uh, this wave of, oh wait, you can just have strangers in your, uh, in your place and play music and have fun. Um, we've also been, in addition to video production, these uh, different photographs we've been taking at concerts. We've also been dabbling into uh, doing planned photo shoots uh, so this is with our friend uh, Klaus and Fabian. Fabian doing the hair, uh, apparently the hair and makeup for this artist, Ships in the Night. Uh, and Klaus, a local photographer and artist, uh, taking the pictures. This was taken in Chinchilla Cafe. Um, just uh, new backgrounds, new lighting um, in order to produce more work for these artists. So we're hopefully going to do more uh, photo shoots like that in the future. And so to sum up, what is Chinchilla Cafe? It's a lot of things. It's a DIY do-it-yourself venue, a concert hall, an archival project uh, using Wikipedia to sort of document the cultural impact and the artists that participate and play at Chinchilla Cafe. Uh, we are essentially a queer nightclub where we celebrate individuals and celebrate love and community here and are essentially a place where um, people can access uh, a different type of culture and community that maybe they didn't have access to before and can feel like themselves. And of course, a production studio, safe space, and a model for how one can do shows, how one can support artists and document what is happening in their town, regardless of the size. And I think more importantly, Chinchilla Cafe uh, is an expression of love. It's an expression of friendship. It's an expression of being gay. It's an expression of art. It's um, it's really meaningful, and I really hope that people can take some lessons from this and create their own chinchilla cafe, even if it happens once, maybe twice, maybe a bunch of times. Um, but I think, yeah, and I, I think that's it. It's it's a really meaningful place, um, and I'm happy to share it with y'all. I'll be happy to take any questions. Please feel free to approach me and talk to me. Um, if you see me around, I have stickers I can give you um, and share more images. I highly recommend you check out our comments categories, Chinchilla Cafe, uh, for our different events and photography. So thank you. Yeah. So I think it's very cool that uh, you've been so open about uploading so much stuff in the comments because it's often it's like, you know, it's a struggle to get any common pictures out of anyone. So I guess yeah. my question is, have you seen the pictures you've uploaded in the comments being used in like by like media publications, like third parties at all? And Ooh. do you expect that some of the bands you feature might eventually become like notable enough for their own Wikipedia pages and then you'd be able to have the features already at comments for people? Right. So the first question, have uh, other media outlets used these comments pictures? Uh, that is a great question. I'm trying to recall offhand. I don't think of, I can't think any top of my hand of any like official magazines or publications. I would very much like that. And to um, tell, like if anybody's writing about these bands, like, hey, we got some pretty cool images, but you can just use for free. Just, um, just cite us, right? Um, the other question was, uh, are these bands essentially going to blow up? Are they going to become popular and big? Uh, there is an incredible and almost um, unbelievable amount of talent in our little town and surrounding areas. 
and just from the people that we attract to Chinchilla, I have no doubt in my mind that at least one, if not a lot of these bands will continue to rise if they, if that's something they want to do uh, to continue music. Most of these bands are people who have full-time jobs. They do this on the side. Maybe they make money out of it. Maybe they don't. Um, but uh, you never know what happens, right? Bands start off, you know, playing in bars, playing in shacks, playing in cafes, and then start playing Coachella. So yeah, I would I would very much uh, suggest to check out some of the bands that have played there and maybe uh, remember their names. And maybe one day you'll you'll remember that, hey, I remember seeing a presentation where they uh, played at some little rodent venue. So <laughs> yeah. I would say thanks for this presentation. Yeah. This is so cool, and I can't wait to bring it back, uh, elements of this back to my community. Yeah. I think uh, something that I'm going to add that I don't mean to be kind of sending and suggesting it anymore, sure. but like uh, reaching out to local journalists and folks that um, work for like kind of um, uh, important but minor editorial organizations. So I'm from mm -hmm. Tulsa, and there's a uh, group called ASLIT, which is just Tulsa Backwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just talking about how, you know, are they really reputable enough to be a citation for a Wikipedia article? Maybe mm -hmm. not. But if they do an article that um, they have really great engagement on Instagram, it helps create a profile for the artist, which helps maybe Instagram getting more notoriety in the, in the greater press ecosystem if they have that documentation. So yes. uh, thanks for really important. Of course, thank you. And, and I want to add, that's a really great point. We've, um, so because we've been operating this out of our house, our engagement with the media has been very, um, a bit of a tightrope walk. Uh, we don't want too much spotlight for, for uh, some reasons I can get into later, um, but we do want people to know about us, right? So that the right people will find us. Um, if, but if you're taking these kinds of pictures, profiling these bands, creating this information and resources, you know, that's not at your personal residence, um, then I think that's a really great way to, yeah, kind of continue to promote these bands. Um, kind of like a lot of the mission with Wiki Portraits, right? If you're here for the previous uh, presentation. So thanks for thanks for adding that. Yeah. Uh, Steve, um, uh, like I go to a lot of talk shows and like the you know, DIY venues, and I'm never sure like how much to document or not. Um, right. Like uh, I was curious whether, um, like whether there are other venues that have taken this approach um, as that in your community, and whether there's there are considerations about what you represent in which data or not. Because I mean, I saw one of your early mm -hmm. posters that you showed, like like the yes for address, which is you know standard speak for right. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe. Um, yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah. Especially especially being a um, a queer venue, it's. Um, I mean, I, I don't need to go into detail about the state of um, the state of this country and this world, and to, to a lot of people, it can be dangerous. Um, to my knowledge, in, in uh, at least in Charlottesville, I don't think um, people have quite taken this level of um, exposure as we have. I think we've been incredibly public and have been very fortunate um, with the results and how people have responded. Um, but basically the history of, of at least these kinds of venues and house shows is just grainy cell phone pics from back in the day. Um, so I'm hoping this uh, incentivizes people or at least inspires people to um, catalog these experiences because they're really important. And this is where like the grassroots of the community kind of form and cement uh, different bonds and how new projects come about. So yeah, thank you for adding that. Yeah. I'm curious if you feel like you're also raising awareness within the community about Wikipedia and wiki projects and yes. how people have responded. Like, do you have to explain what comments is and like where you're putting the photos? Yes, so that is, so the question was about, um, do we have to tell people what we, wiki comments and wiki data means? Yes, that's huge. People often don't even know what an open copyright is. So when we talk about, oh, we're gonna post these online um, under open copyright, people don't understand that. We often have to explain to the bands what that means. Um, and it's it's really doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're not in the wiki world. Like, why would you think about that? Um, a lot of people might think like, why can't I just, you know, upload this video of this band playing when we know that, you know, there are certain restrictions on the lyrics, the sound, the, the composition. Um, but we do try our best to explain, you know, what wiki is. It's not just reading articles. It's actually, you know, something that we all engage in and can participate in. 
Um, so, I, and we've actually had, I think I have a slide here with some of the, I don't know what I was trying to do here, but this one right here, this band, Huga Huga, uh, they're a metal band in Charlottesville. Uh, this is actually uploaded by Jimmy, the drummer, um, all, I think all on his own, uh, to Wiki Commons, which was really remarkable. I think he was the first one to do that of the people who performed there. Um, as well as one of our bands, Echo Astral, I think somebody else, um, uh, decided to to write the Wikipedia article about them now that they're actually um, getting more and more exposure. So yeah, we're doing our part to uh, educate people about Wiki and we're hoping to kind of uh, get more people to join the cult a little bit. So, yeah. I don't know if you're interested in writing the Wikipedia article. I'm not going to be able to write it, but you know that would be... That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, uh, one more question. I think it's interesting that you, you're focusing on local entertainment because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on this article that's still on hold and it's about life in New York City in the 30s. And I'm just amazed at how much entertainment is local compared to what was like a completely different reality. Right. And local entertainment was so huge. I mean, it's like, and then there was, there was one house that's located on 30 West 72nd Street, right? That house is connected to the article that I'm writing about the person that was part of the New Thought Movement. And I, now I want to do an article on that particular house. Yeah. And I'm trying to find, they had all these people that were into spirituality and um, it was just amazing what went on as far as how people came together. Yeah. So they asked me everybody to add this. It's called Encouraging West 72nd Street. And I found the little pieces. And it's kind of interesting. What life is like in there with no television. And there was a lot of local entertainment. I would love I would love to talk. I would love to talk more about that. Okay. Yes. Everything is local. If you haven't gone to local. Yes, if you haven't gone, you know, if you're going to your local book sign book signing, um concert go to your local punk show find it it's that's that's where like real cool stuff is happening thank you. i think we got time yeah thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.